Hello, kids. Welcome back to another month of the Chichester Chats. I am here. Lilith is back. And, of course, the star of our show, Mr. DG Chichester. Hello, sir. Phil, Lilith, good to see, hear you guys, as always. Uh, hope everyone's doing great. It's always good to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on? Uh, not a lot. Uh, what have you, oh, what have you been doing? You... Have you been taking more trips? I see. I always see pictures, but I'm like, do you have those saved saved up? Or you 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 always say not a lot. You guys like run like 30 podcasts a week. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so we're like, sitting at our house doing podcasts. Yeah. I, I never understand how you know you produce so much quality content, and I like struggle over a line. Um, no, those pictures I've been posting. Um, I have a I have a time lag in my social media. I cannot. I don't know if I can't stand, but I've never been able to master the the real time moment of like, Oh yeah, take that picture and post it right here. And, you know, tell everyone what a great crappy meal, you know, this was right in the moment. Uh, um, I have friends who do that. In fact, the friend I was on that trip with hated one of the meals we had and had to immediately get on Yelp and let the world know how terrible it was. But uh, no, I tend to um, kind of gather them up and then say, wow, look, I took 12 pictures and, one half of one is decent if I, <laughs> if I go in and manipulate it and then I'll decide to, to share that. So uh, that was, um, yeah, that was uh, toward the end of, probably more toward the end of September, uh, some of those pictures from, from Maine and such, which was a nice area. See, I was waiting for pictures to hit the timeline of uh, that lunch you and Fabian had. No, we took not one picture. <laughs> you know, we, we laughed about it. We joked about it. Uh, you know, we said, oh, we should uh, take one, but we we. Did nothing. We we just uh, we should have taken some pictures of the the waiters uh, who were just shooting us nasty looks because we just sat there. It, well, you know, we got to this restaurant and it was super crowded, and uh, and then there was nobody left by the time we left. You know, and you know they're they're trying to shut down between lunch and and dinner, and uh, and the two of us were just kind of kicking back, and uh, you know, it's the, the waiter shifts from the uh, you know, can I get you anything else to. Uh, how the hell do I get you out of here? <laughs> Damn writers. <laughs> exactly. Let me spill the coffee on you as I bring it to you, that kind of thing. So it's kind of weird to ask people. I, I think you've known for a long time, you know, for a picture. If somebody else shoots it of you. I think it's it's a lot easier than like saying to me at least again, but I'm I just What's that a... saying? You know your best friends when you don't when you we have like a uh, like a collective of like maybe three photos together. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know it's it's. I mean, it's, it's certain. I just some people just wow. In it again, while Lilith is my best friend, then I think we have maybe three <laughs> pictures together. <laughs> See, there I think you go. Maybe two, quite possibly, without like Charlie or Miles or anything. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if I ever asked you this. Uh, uh, have you been? Wa- did you watch She Hulk the whole series? Uh- I did. I did. I was I was a little bit behind, uh, so I had to catch up uh, and and was able to avoid uh, spoilers and and such. But I uh, I thought it was great. I mean, I beyond the Daredevil appearance, which was wonderful and hysterical. Uh, I just uh, I I thought it had its own character and uh, you know identity. I wonky special effects don't bother me like they do some people. Uh, I think they had an amazing uh, finger on the pulse of both internet trolls and <laughs> and, <laughs> and and an ability to uh, channel what I remember is the feeling of that book. I haven't read that book, and if it's even still around as a standalone book, but I haven't read any any of it in, in forever and a day. But that's the quality that stands out to me is the breaking the third wall. You know, charming character, uh, a lot of fun. You know, with it. as opposed to if you go to say. And a totally appropriate way to do it, but if you read Immortal Hulk or something like that, and She Hulk in there is, you know, one one step away from feral, you know, which makes sense for that book. But yeah, I like this interpretation. And Daredevil was was great. I mean, I know there were people who were just thrilled to see Charlie Cox, um, as anyone who was a fan of what he did would be. But then there were, of course, the people who were like, "What's the color scheme on that costume?" And- <laughs> How can he possibly smile and appear in daylight and all that kind of stuff? Uh, but they, they don't know him. that he can fill the colors. It's fine. I guess, but I mean, what a great line! You know, when it's like 
you know, uh, dare, you know, well, who are you? I'm Daredevil. You know, well, ketchup and mustard's a pretty daring choice. And that's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was just, just going, you know, I, I could see the two of them or because they had such great chemistry. I think probably everybody has great chemistry with that actress, but uh, I, I could see them just speeding up the dialogue and playing them like a moonlighting back and forth <laughs> between them. Uh, and with both sexual tension and legal nonsense sort of going on, that would be a pretty fun half an hour. Yeah, I, I did want to ask you about the Daredevil because that is interesting because it's like you've written so much Daredevil. It's just like, hmm, uh, you know, I just always interested in what your take is like on anything Daredevil and stuff. Yeah, I think this is total conjecture, but as I have no inside track or, or anything, but if this is the way they're introducing him and reintroducing him it, it it just says to me that that makes it's the perfect place to introduce him if you are going to do some tv extended movie version of, of born again because everyone's like well we want the dark daredevil i want the dark devil i want the dark daredevil you know from netflix especially but you can't do born again necessarily right in my mind if you start with the dark daredevil if you remember when born again kicked off it was it was he was he was not happy go lucky, but he had a penthouse and he had a law office and he had you know he was a pretty happy character in, in some ways. Yeah, he had like well, happy for Matt. Yeah, he, he happy had, for Matt. Right, had happy some had Matt. some money. But, he was dating. Had yeah. some money. Yes, things were things were going on that like he is kind of now. I think so. I think this is if this is what you're starting with, and then in whatever new interpretation this is, he gets in Fisk's face or Fisk just doesn't like somebody you know jumping around the the city in in uh yellow and red uh then you know, that's too great... hungry right exactly <laughs> exactly where's my papaya dog I, oh wait it's just i got a costume and then uh you know it's a pretty great way to sort of then turn you know, turn the dial on the character yeah, if they do that, they're going to plenty of room to flesh it out because I think they said it's going to be 18 episodes or something. Yeah, it's yeah. a good good stretch. And I don't know if those are meant to be half hour episodes, hour, whatever it is. It's a it's a it's a really extended amount of time to play with. It's almost like network TV stuff. Yeah, like length of a well, network TV show. It's an experiment. Like as, as a shareholder at Disney, um, they got to get those viewership numbers up over on Disney Plus because they followed right. the last three quarters, and I think that's a fantastic idea is to mess with the formula of their tv series to see if it's still viable i think it's a still viable format absolutely and and the pacing and what you're trying to do with the show i mean i'm i know some people because i guess people have nothing to do except complain about stuff i mean i know some people are down on andor uh the star wars show uh which is uh i think supposed to be 18 or 20 four episodes maybe itself you but. should be excited for it i mean Andor they have so much world building that they can explore like and as a star wars fan you should be excited about that i, I <laughs> totally agree we totally agree i think the pacing on it is terrific it's different i i love it i i just the whole vibe of it is but some people are like oh it's so slow it's watching you know, uh, paint star dry wars has always been slow <laughs> <laughs> have you ever watched the movies it's I all have. political dialogue and intrigue and subtle backstabbing like come it, on it, exactly that trade federation discussions uh you know and and the uh the non-romantic qualities of sam yes they're all exactly uh, <laughs> this guy gets it and again it's not skywalkers or anything so you don't know which the, i mean it Again, it's kind of a prequel, but you don't know a lot of what's where things no, you are going to go. And no. that's wonderful, isn't it? It is great. I mean, just, I mean, the, the quality of the actors it just is amazing. Amazing. Just stuff. They're just, they're not chewing scenery. I mean, I just, they just, they command the scenes the way they're doing it. Um, I, I'm really, really enjoying that. Of Well, the Mandalorian uh, kind of ruined it for everybody. To be well, the, <laughs> and it's, that's its own thing, right? The pacing of exactly. that's amazing, but it's a totally different. Uh, you know, crazy thing, but I, I, it's my anti, uh, what the frig is it? You know, House of Dragons. You know, House of Dragons. <laughs> so I totally get that. Um, I do want to say thank you so much for uh the pinup at the end of the issue that we're discussing. <laughs> <laughs> That was just like an excellent choice to have 
how to how to end an issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's, it's, it's dead too. It's a weird issue because it's like he doesn't appear in costume one, so here's a paid up of him in the, in the costume. I right, actually right, love right. that. You capture the vibe. I, I I love especially like Daredevil and Spider Man when they're out in their city because Mar- there's nothing like Marvel's New York. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. I actually think I, I don't have the plots, you know, as you guys know a- anymore. I think they inserted that after the fact, uh, and the the pinup at the end because somebody, and I don't know how you possibly approve the story as it was, and we could talk about aspects of that, you know, and then worry about that he's not in costume the whole issue, so here he is. In case you forgot whose book this was, <laughs> um, or have asked editorially for a correction within the story, which you could have used, but. Um, but maybe I added it too. I have no idea. I don't think I did. All right. So yeah. So for you people who can't read the like you know the titles on this episode, yes, it's there. We're talking Daredevil <laughs> three sixteen, uh, which I always feel not, like- and- not Andor, not House of Dragons, not yes, not Born that's again. bonus. Yeah. You get bonus yeah. this time. Bonus kid. content. But yeah, Daredevil three sixteen, which I always think of, of, of is like a bookend with three hundred four. Uh, exactly. It was meant to be. It was, it was yeah. exactly a year later. Right. So I don't know if you thought of this or not, but it's like, did you kind of uh, envision this as kind of like almost like a like, I don't want to say opposite, but it's like, you know, 304, he was out in the city just as Daredevil here. He's mad the whole time. It, you know, he spends a week in this. Well, here and there. It, a week. <laughs> not a solid <laughs> week. Kids. He goes home and okay, sleeps. But he yeah, let's go home. Right. It's yeah. different. It's different from three, 304 for, uh, you know, folks who have not caught up with us uh, was called 34 hours and 34 hours was a direct line of time that daredevil could for various reasons go read the story uh concentrate on say the the non-extreme crimes but important moments that he could help with and it was just dedicated 34 hours he had to kind of keep at it and we sort of followed him from vignette to vignette and it turned out great it turned out with the, the the i thought you know the stories of the of the many things I wrote um, and never looked at again and doubt it until you guys started this, um, <laughs> you know I always felt that one worked well and and of course Ron did an amazing Ron Garney did an amazing job with it and so as we came a year later I, it just occurred to me do can we do that book then can we do a series of vignettes that are about the flavor and character of New York and New Yorkers. And, and how uh, Matt Murdock Daredevil could interact with them. But then it was that exact thing. It was, it was the sense that he was all Daredevil all the time. What if he was all Matt all the time? Cool. And how do you play that out? And then the conceit became the subway uh, that we, we, it's essentially subway stories where you know, all the incidents are things that happen in the tunnels or in the trains. Um, that he encounters as he goes along, which was kind of an odd choice, um, but I probably was spending a lot of time on the subway. I was going to say, yeah, the sub- <laughs> subway in New York will humble anybody. <laughs> right, <laughs> it is the right, great right. equalizer of New York. <laughs> exactly. So um, so, uh, so that was it. It was just a series of vignettes of things, big and small, that he, he can interact with without having to suddenly go put the horns on. Or he can just, he can, he can use his Matt Murdock isness and uh and help without totally exposing um himself or his uh, abilities and were all these incidents in this issue purely from your mind or did any of these come from like reading you know from the aka the chichester fouls you know thing? Right. <laughs> well, I, well first thing you know i i think we should uh you know consider renaming the podcast like you know chichester therapy or you know at least comic <laughs> Comic book therapy because I, I need a picture I, of you I, on a couch right away. To, yes, to exactly. Test your therapy. Or, or in a, in a straitjacket, uh, more more to it. But because uh, I think, as you know, when we ended last episode and you said, "Oh, this is the next one," I I said, "Well, I don't really like that story. I don't really think very very highly of it. Um, I don't think it worked." But you forced me to kind of go back in and <laughs> revisit these. And read them. Welcome to my world. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes for the first time, and uh, and and I I thought it worked. I thought it was yeah. it was actually it was it was a it was a responsible. Uh, I don't think it works as well as thirty four hours, but I think it it um it, it, and we can talk about the the problems that it has, but it uh, it actually holds up, and the vignettes uh, work nicely, and it it does kind of achieve what it was supposed to do, and 
does not disappoint, I guess, in the way that I thought it did. So it's, I thought it was like a muddle and a jumble and a, and a, and a whatever. And I thought it actually kind of clicked. So most of the things, uh, rereading it, um, are things that were either from the files or things that I witnessed directly. I, I don't think I ever witnessed a, a, a token sucker, you, you know, at work, um, you know, people who would go to, in the old days, kids before smartphones and, and then credit card swipers, we used to drop little metal tokens into the subway turnstiles to, to enter the uh, underground. And, uh, and apparently there was, there was a thing and this would have been a Newsday article. I could just see this total Newsday article about uh, token suckers who would then, as somebody dropped a token and would basically follow them and suck the token <laughs> back out of the, the mechanism uh, to get the buck 25, uh, worth of it out of there. Um, the can man, uh, you know, there's a character as he's going through, who's creating these, uh, metal, uh, taking metal tin cans and soda cans and carving them up into elaborate sculptures and has this litany of I'm the can man, I'm the can man. I, I remember that guy distinctly. I mean, <laughs> now I don't even thought of him in whatever, but as we're reading, it, it's like, okay, I remember that guy. And, and so they were, a combination for the most part of things I read or directly saw um, uh, it, because you saw a lot of things on the subway. Um, I think 90s the biggest New York. Yeah. Yeah. Nineties, <laughs> eight. I mean, eighties New York too. I mean, I'd been, I had come to New York in the first time in 82, 83. Um, oh, right? wow. Yeah. When I, when I was, when I, I know, I know. Right. <laughs> um, gets boy, this, this product is Time's in the, where was it even cleaned up then? Oh my god! No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I remember seeing um, uh, E.T. and Maniac on a double bill. That was uh, that was the kind of that was your Forty Second Street theater experience. You, you have E.T. and Maniac on one uh, you know one setting. So, uh, but yeah, I think that was that was just a collection of things and thoughts and and bits and lines of dialogue, you know, the, the way people would would talk. Uh, you know the the vet about uh, serving the you know the country the the uh, you know seeing the people in the wheelchair who are begging and then when nobody's looking you know they get up and they walk you know <laughs> so uh, all those kind of things uh, just gotta become... check the shoes yeah check yeah shoes. exactly that was funny right. hit me on at Matt it's like oh quit with that blind man routine <laughs> right 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 but I. I mean, again, yeah, the story, age, you know, except for stuff like the like, tokens. I mean, this could be little tweaks. This could be a story from today. I mean, this could be uh, like sadly, said, yeah. I yeah. mean, the whole ending <laughs> where they, where they, uh, you know, the cops draw down on the the black um, undercover yeah. cop um, was just uh, that. I certainly didn't witness. Um, could have been a Newsday article though, but the the you know the misdirected. Uh, racism and uh and targeting there was almost like oh jesus christ this is a <laughs> this feels like just something that just just happened um but the other incidents i don't know if all of it actually could be um because to lilith's uh, skeevy reaction to the subway I, she's probably experienced it a little bit and uh i don't know if it's that skeevy these days you, oh you know, it is from, from, <laughs> is it i i'm on it i'm on it so intermittently um, but I'll take your word for it then. I, I mean, I've never been on there, but I've heard stories. I'm like, is that, do, do people still use the train the train as a as a toilet? Uh, oh yeah, oh okay. yeah, the yeah. whole subway in general. Um, I, I lived in New York for nine months, and then you know I, I haven't been back since uh, twenty early 2019. But it was it was still still kind of crazy pretty... in 2019. Okay. I was just okay. like, um, why can't it just be like Japan? Why can't we have light rail, clean, <laughs> well lit <laughs> public travel? Yeah, you're you're. I'm taking your word for it. I mean, when I used to commute, you know. More I'd rather catch the bus in New York now, honestly. Really, really. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm, I ride now just the, uh, I would say, a main line. I'll go from, say, <coughs> excuse me, Grand Central to 14th Street. Oh, yeah, or, that's not too bad. Like, but um, when I used to go around and I would go from Greenpoint or Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, into the city, and then Williamsburg and Greenpoint were not trendy as they are now. So 
Uh, You'd expect them to have cleaned that up with it being so, you know, gentrified, but nope. (laughs) Not so much, huh? Okay. (laughs) They got to keep it authentic. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a system. It's one of the few systems, not defending it, you know, but it's. Oh, no, it's so great. It's just showing its age. It runs 24 7, yeah, for the most part. It's always open. But American infrastructure. It's just, you know, we don't really put a lot of uh, time and thought into it or care, so. And I also brought things from late at night into the middle of the day. You know, and you wander around and you probably will see anything at any hour of the day. But if I was picking something up at, at uh, you know, 11 p.m. or 2 a.m. Um, hours, I would not necessarily ride it these days. <laughs> but, I, you know, those would be bits and pieces I would have collected and said, oh, that, the way that guy's looking or the way, you know, somebody's giving that person heat or angst, you know, that would be the way to go. I did love the classic baby being born, though. <laughs> yeah, I, and that feels like that was um, probably uh, a Newsday thing, you know. And and yeah, but it and it was you know a single page emotional thing um, worked out worked out okay. There there were some there were some massive moments of like just stop the guy with the captions. There's just so many like Jesus Christ, you know the opening page alone is just all right you made your point dan you know that uh you know lots lots of lots of details in the subway it's you don't need to go through the entire construction history of how many stones they brought out or how many steps there are exactly one would do but (laughs) clearly i i had done my research and wanted everybody to know it (laughs) no i liked it there wasn't like a ton of matt dialogue it was more like you narrating the thing than you know a lot of it i I like that you know has much to say though outside of being like like matt the person not like daredevil so Mm. for me that fit and it too it wasn't like one i mean it is one long story but it's like you jump from day to day so it's like a bunch of little vignettes and stuff so right yeah right right. we we use the stations instead of the hours right right 30 34 hours every every setup was a location but it was also it's hour 15 it's hour 10 it's hour whatever and here we just jumped from uh, 14th Street station to this station to that station. But. And um, I don't know if you remember or not, but uh, why was I was why wasn't Scott on this? I mean, the art was good, but I'm like, I was I would have been interested to see Scott's take on this. But I was like, oh, maybe. They're yeah, giving, maybe maybe they're giving him time to rev up because fall from grace is coming. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. I, I don't remember. I don't remember why, because remember, we still had the, the two grease issues that would follow. Yeah. Follow mm-hmm. this. Um, so I do not remember, uh, what was going on, uh, with Scott at that time. If he was, uh, you know, I can't remember any major life incident. Maybe he got married uh, around that time, but I can't remember, uh, for sure. Oh, and on but a good thing he came back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But on a good note, um, I know I'd said before, like there was like a gap on Marvel Unlimited, like it, like from three issue three hundred to three nineteen, there was nothing in there. They filled that in, mm-hmm. so yes, oh, have they? Yes, okay. so they put okay. more. They heard here. you, Phil. They good. Know how many people you refer to the app? They heard you, Phil. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'm glad it's it's all there, and I don't have to let go. Um, well, I'll probably still just go to the the, you know, not the dark corners of the web, but the lightly shadowed ones. Where it's like, oh look, you scan that in for me. I don't have to go find. The- <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so more and more of your work is going up on there. So more That's chance awesome. for people to as we it. rev up for the Daredevil TV show, I might one may suspect <laughs> they want to uh, fill in those gaps. They got time. I don't think it starts till twenty twenty four. So yeah, so yeah. All, all of a sudden, well, it actually takes a lot to to scan it in correctly. Mm. As a person who does that for their own comics, so that I can have it in the cloud and not have to like have so many in my actual house <laughs> there you yeah, go to get to get it perfectly correct it does take a lot of time for just one single issue so do you and have then one of to those overhead overhead I scanner, do. like those book scanners yeah yeah or you can also use the um if you have a large receipt scanner the one that can take the full page that's also very <laughs> helpful okay too. okay uh <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. No, I, I will defend the interns. I will defend yeah. the interns. I just wanted. I just wanted to say it's easier to find his work now too, because if you can't find the back issues, because I don't know, if, I don't think this is in a collection, but yeah, it's all well, Marvel Unlimited. So it might be in one of the epic ones. I'm not. Oh, sure. Oh, oh, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, it could. It could be. Um, because they they got pretty good about it. No, I mean, I, I I would be lying if I if I said it wasn't fun and gratifying to finally have just some let alone it seems at this point probably all of the work 
you know, reprint it in one form or another. You know, there'd be these sad moments for many years going to the bookstore and there'd be the trade collections of this Daredevil story and that Daredevil story. And and the two of mine that I would have thought most appropriate, which would have been Fall from Grace and, and Fall of the Kingpin, uh, both of which defensively are pretty good stories and had some uh, uh, traction. You could never find the trade collections. You know, there were trade collections of both and there'd be this and then this, you know, obviously Born Again and Frank Miller stuff, uh, totally expected. But I thought some fairly obscure collections of like <laughs> other folks who'd worked on it. And there's like, you know, what did I do wrong? Uh, but uh, it, it's uh, it's all out there now. So I, go go get it. I mean, they need to. Re- I mean, they need to reprint them all. But I'm like, I always thought it would be a nice little collection of uh, 304, that 312 and 313 we covered last time, and then this issue. I, th- I thought mm. that would make it like a nice little four issue right, package, like a kind of yeah. like a like a, a New York stories type of thing. I yeah, mean, that, that's that's something that I would assume there's a reprint editor, um, but you would think there's a a a big chart that actually starts to combine those things because. Just because they've reprinted it once doesn't mean they can't reprint it 30 more times. I mean, that's that's certainly the Disney model. And just recollecting them in different assemblies is actually not a bad idea. You know, you could just take, because I'm sure Bendis, Wade, uh, you know, anybody, right, has got a couple of, uh, I'll, let's call them just New York story, Daredevil stories, right? And uh, Wade might have San Francisco stories. I don't know. But uh, you know, just package them that way. And then, and go go for it. Have fun. Yeah, because sometimes they do hard cover, soft cut, then the soft cover, and like little. Side. Right. The closer we get to that series, they're going to be looking for any excuse to print anything Daredevil. Right. I yeah. I would assume. I would assume so. To the point where none of it I'm will sell. Looking forward to I'm... our Daredevil Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not to get too personal, but like for the Marvel Unlimited, like do you get residuals like for like re like per reads or downloads or anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean Marvel has been um, uh, you know, it's easy, easy for folks to to diss on them, uh, I guess for for various reasons, but I will say they have been uh really responsible um and kept track of me, you know, over the years uh with um. I think the technical term would be in an in, in incentive payments. I think that's that's the way it's sort of like tracked out as. And uh, does it work like Kindle, where uh, it's like per page? Like you, like usually, like yeah, I think it is per page. There was a um, going back to the orig- original original uh, work for hire thing and, and what you were sort of signing on to. It was it was a certain percentage of of sales after a certain number. So, and the number was pretty high, you know, because they Naturally. at that point the books were were selling extraordinary numbers. Uh, so, say say the number was eighty thousand copies or, or whatever, uh, of which today nothing or very few things you know sell at that number. But eighty thousand, then the incentive payment would would kick in, and I want to say the incentive, and I'm just making these numbers up, but I want say the incentive was three percent, right? That three percent maybe 4% would then be split between the primary people. So say the writer might get 1%, the penciler would get 1%, the inker might get might get 1%, and then the colorist, um, and I don't know if the letter or got incentives, you know, would split the, the, the other, you know, the other ones. So, um, but it could add up, you know, it, it, it would add up uh, on big sales and, and now, uh, you know, they keep track of the digital sales, and I'm sure I signed something foolishly without really reading it. Um, uh, you know, in the interim, uh, that sort of covered uh, that type of thing. But the, I've gotten incentive payments for the digital comics as well as the, you know, the print ones. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's been four dollars and ninety two cents. You know. <laughs> And sometimes it's been a couple hundred bucks, you know, so that's, not, that's been a nice, that's a nice surprise. I mean, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, there was one, I remember, uh, I was eyeing a, a, a technology toy that I really didn't need at all. And, and, and it was like, yeah, well, okay, this, this is where you've matured and you'll pause and not hit purchase right away. And then, and then a couple of days later, I got actually a pretty big incentive check, you know, for a few hundred dollars and said, okay, well, that's, that's the. The universe saying to you that you need this. That was my justification. So, 
or that you can get you can you can get it you still didn't need it but but it's been fun i mean at least with the digital they can track that and at least you get a little something because it's like if i go to my local shop and i buy something you wrote in the 90s like kind of a back issue bin or something you're not getting anything from that you'll get nothing with that right that's that's you know that was the you know um the convoluted rationale for uh, you know nfts these non-fungible tokens with like digital art and and that at least from an artist's point of view maybe for a writer's point of view if they were uh tagging it excuse me um it, you know you could sort of keep track of something like that and then maybe get some kind of payment for it but um uh, but certainly yeah if you're buying a back issue now you're getting I'm getting your enjoyment of the story out of it. If we run into yeah. each other <laughs> at a con or you decide to write me, you know, uh, track me down and drop me a note. But no, I don't get anything from there. Um, uh, it would only be Got the it. newer Read collections. Marvel stuff on the app. Yeah. Well, you know, and... and <laughs> or do both. Uh, right. Right. You know, and, and there's probably a kind of convoluted uh, assembly around um, the digital uh, payments and the rights both in terms of buying it on something like Marvel Unlimited or Comixology, but also uh, apps like uh, Hoopla, you know, the, the library app, which features a lot of comics. But I, I believe there's a a per read payment, you know, type of thing that that's how that works with those, I think. But anyway, I get something now and again, and it's it's uh, I'm not going to retire on it, but it's. It's it's nice to sort of see it. My my uh, guy who does my taxes is like, "Oh, you're working for Marvel again?" Not so much, but you know, <laughs> not, not so much, but uh, you know, it's, uh, something came in that I declared. You say that's nice. At least you're getting enough that uh, you have to declare it on your taxes. Yeah. Well, you know, I declare everything because I'm stupid. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, smart. And, well, and you know, as a creative, they, it's they, better safe than sorry. Honestly. Right. And, and if they send you a check, you know, then then they've reported it somewhere. So uh, you may as well hey, step it up. Hey, it's better to do that than uh, I don't want to see a headline six months from now. Former Daredevil writer uh, arrested exactly, for tax exactly. evasion. You know, even Matt Murdock couldn't defend this tax scandal. Right? You know, <laughs> I think you'd be better off with Jennifer, but that's just me. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Me and my kid, I think I said this, you know, me and my kid would joke during the Netflix, you know, series that if Matt ever, like, actually focused, he'd be, you know, Amazing. he is a great lawyer, but he doesn't focus, and you really want Foggy working for you. You don't want Murdoch, because he's going to be distracted, you know, decide he's just going to go out at night and just beat the problem into submission. Well, I mean, at least with your run, at least when he wasn't in the office, he was doing like worthwhile stuff like, you know, keeping like in this, you know, keeping people on the subway from getting stabbed or something. Uh, you know, so other times, well, uh, other writers, it's just like, oh, he's punching ninjas in the face. So, you know, half a world away. It's like, oh. well, that was that was my read on the character. Right. Yeah. I, I thought the tortured altar boy ish aspect of him was had to translate into I want to do good. And, and that goes back to the you know, the edicts of how he was brought up, you know, if his father had let him come into the gym and train uh, with him, even when he was blind or whatever, it might've become even more of a brawler and whatever, but you know, you're going to use this. You're not going to do this, even though he would do it. Total hypocrite. Um, but you know, <laughs> tortured, tortured soul hypocrite, but uh, <clears throat> you don't become a lawyer or do the vigilanteism or do the tortured, you know, Catholic uh, routine. If you don't have, some sense of wanting to do do good no that's why i said i I always keep telling you this i that's why i liked about your run is it seemed like he was a man of the people even the bigger stories like fall from grace you know he saw the guy who was trapped in the middle of this conspiracy eddie you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you that's that's a really that's a that's a really great read i'm glad there was a uh, a consistent sort of soul to uh you know to it thank you phil i i think i think that's kind of uh well, I don't know. Some writers kind of lose with like current Daredevil. It's just like he seems more focused on the big picture and not like the people. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It's um. I mean, it's. Uh, it, you, you, in, you, you can't. You, you're never gonna win against corruption. I'm sorry. What you can do is you can you can do the little things. Well, <laughs> that's a good. That's Marvel's New York. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a great read too. And and uh, you know, I'll never uh, it, when I was much younger you know would, i would have quickly piled on and you know snarked about writer x and i'll still do that for the right writer don't don't 
we're not going to lose that entertainment value. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know all the things that, that folks go through. You know, maybe somebody introduces scenes of uh, real, you know, down in the street, you know, do goodness. And, and somebody comes back and says, no, you got to, that, that no reader wants to read that. You know, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to get to the next crossover or maybe people just don't think about it. Cause frankly, you know, when you're churning out monthly comics, especially, and I've been there, right. Um, uh, it's really easy to think about the big incidents and just crank the dial on that. And, uh, and, and just rush forward. So I can see both sides. I mean, we've talked about it before, but I think there's a bit pressure on like all current writers. Let's like, oh, what's the next big event? You know? Yep, right. And and they maybe dictate it that event to some extent too. If it's a big crossover thing, or or maybe you're manufacturing, you know, a big a big crossover thing yourself. Maybe you're driving it. Um, I was. Uh, what was the thing that's um the Daredevil one, the Devil's Reign? Yeah. Uh, right? was yeah. That- or yeah. Was that was that a self contained Daredevil story? Did that draw in? I know he drew in characters, but did that affect other books? Uh it well? was a mini series, and then it had kind of like uh, spin offs between one and three issue spin offs and stuff. So, oh, okay, yeah. okay. So it was almost like a like a an epic event in its own in its own right. Mm-hmm. Which was crazy because the Spider Man thing was going at the same time as Spider Man. <laughs> I know there was a Spider Man. There was a Devil's Reign tie-in, which was also happening at the same time where they were doing something in Spider Man, where Ben Riley was back. So, like Spider Man, it was like in the middle of two crossovers in one issue. So, right, 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 right. Which Spider Man is it? You guess. Here, scratch off. You know, get a sticker. Make it's it Kane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <sighs> All right. Sorry, uh, Phil. That's a, no, I, I'm, it's me who takes us off track, not you. No. So, Lil, Lil, if you go, you, you haven't been here in a while. No, like I said, I, I really did. Like, I love when Matt is in the city. Like, I, I, I love how you capture the city. And yeah. I mean, the city is a character in all the, in your whole run. But like, when you just get down to like the, like the actual people level, I, I really enjoy it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that's, I, Again, reading it over again, I'm like, hey, that works. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, that's what I intended. I I do like the little people uh, bits and stuff. I think um, because how can we get through an episode without being you know self critical? Uh, I think that the attempt to be some junior league Scorsese or whatever and just play with street, excuse me, dialogue uh, doesn't work as well in comics because there's some of the overlapping balloons and a little bit where even though the pointers are going to people, it's a little hard to kind of, I think reading it now, keep track of who's saying what, when they're incidental characters. So there might've been something to work with the letter on that, where we might've changed the shape of the balloon a little bit, or maybe even colored the balloons to kind of help them keep track of that, um, uh, you know, sort of interesting side dialogue that was coloring the scenes but wasn't say the main driver, especially toward that, that end incident where so much is happening, right? These, the, the con games going with the guy in the wheelchair and the, the thieves are breaking in and the guys are, uh, you know, the cops are, are shooting their, their, uh, their partner. So a lot of stuff going on, um, which all adds up, but, uh, it takes, it, uh, it just takes some, I think, think rethinking of it. And my favorite panel, and I, I think Phil should know what my favorite panel is, is where he's just walking in the subway, whistling and tapping his cane through, and it's just like tap, tap. Because it's, it's kind of an inside joke about, like, uh, Matt tapping his way downtown. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is it. This is the oh, panel. The, um, where he's, like, tapping out. The kids can't remember the song because they're yeah. freezing up. Yeah. And then he sort of, like, he taps out the beat for them. That was, yeah, that was uh, – that was – rereading that that was that was fun and that was you know here's a little simple way that he can overhear it you know now he's got a sense of rhythm uh more than i do uh and uh you know it was uh it was fun to do that and uh, picking up on a couple you know my own in jokes you know, the me nobody knows which is the musical they're talking about was actually something we performed in my high school <laughs> so, there you go <laughs> uh, um which uh totally obscure musical but uh uh yeah there was little little bits like that were definitely fun to to read again and and uh, a different way of looking at the the character 
that was what I was going to ask. Okay, so besides that, were there any other personal touches in here? Anybody you knew in this issue or? <laughs> there's that ha- there's a ham fisted Clyde Barker reference. I know that. There's that <laughs> yeah. you know, look at a Clyde Barker audiobook. Um, um, I, again, I just think it's the, the things that I, I witnessed, you know, over the yeah. years, you know, the bits of dialogue, the can man guy, um, uh, you know, the, the, um, you know, didn't actually see anybody attack, uh, a subway booth, uh, attendant and, and crash through the glass, but certainly saw a number of people who looked like they could. Um, the pennies talk was mm-hmm. a, a constant litany from attendants of, when they would have to take the payment at the toll, uh, not the toll booth, but at the token booth. And you actually have to pay them. You know, I remember more than one person, um, the sing songing of no pennies, no pennies, no pennies. So definitely it was just trying to live the life in the subway uh, and, and see how that plays out. Also myths to live by Joseph. Yeah. 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 That was, that was, that was ham fisted too. Yes. That was (laughs) definitely, definitely. You're right. Yes. Thank you for, that. neither <laughs> neither of those were elegant um and uh and definitely it's okay tread. it's to get the kids to read it's yeah okay. you know but it, it treads over into uh, uh and even the like i said the de- some of the some of the details about the subway i think definitely work and key in it's like there's this many steps there's this many stations there's this many you know hours that went into constructing it or whatever any one of those would have served the purpose they don't need all of them and you know my friend greg wright uh but the history you know, of the subway in New York is actually super fascinating. So it is super I, I'll fascinating. I'll allow it. I'll allow it's, it. It is super fascinating, but you don't have to, as he said to me, you know, on many occasion, you know, uh, you don't have to prove how fucking re- well read you are. And, you know, that's. <laughs> and, as a writer, that, what's the point if you can't do Well, that? you know, that's the, the uh, yes, there's, there is everything in moderation, right? It's uh, you don't need to kind of get it all out there, all on one page. Uh, spread it out but uh but yeah there was nobody who was specifically oh that was my good friend there or that's a reference to you know my grandfather or, or something like that but uh but it incident wise it it felt it did definitely take me back into traveling the subway in the sense of living in new york and observing those things which is actually pretty good when you think about it to to evoke at least those sensations in me i must have been <laughs> been kind of carving out a niche that i understood and i don't know if you'll remember or not but um when you started writing this script did you assume scott was going to be on this or did you know right away that you were going to have a fill-in artist and if you started thinking it was going to be scott did you change anything or did you want to change anything once you realized it was going to be a different artist that's a great question i don't remember uh in detail my gut would tell me that because i can't remember the incident or reason why yeah. Scott wasn't on that issue, you know, as opposed to say when he and I took a break to go do Electra or, or something like that. Um, uh, so I would, I, my presumption would be that I was writing it as if Scott was going to do it. And, and, but in writing for Scott at that point, uh, writing, you know, with Scott at that point, uh, I guess for Scott is right. Uh, there would be, I, I can't think of anything that I would have introduced specifically that would have been a change because he wasn't doing it. You, you know, there wasn't writing for Scott later as we got more simpatico and I, and I, and I kind of knew in my mind's eye what Scott would do. I, I think I would get more shorthanded or, or describe things more um, in line with we were, we seemed very in sync, um, you know, to, to me. Uh, but this was, you know, he was still playing with his whatever, you know, he was, he was still Bagley light, you know, in, in some ways. And uh, and he was still exploring things. So there was no real distinctive, the same level of distinctive quality that he would later achieve. Hmm. Yeah, I just I, I've, I've heard our writers say, you know, sometimes they tune the writing to, you know, who whatever artist they're working for. And, you know, sometimes if midway through you know you get kicked the you know a curveball of, oh hey it's a different you know it's gonna be a different artist sometimes well yeah i mean totally if there was you know if you did a story and you know it was on a horse farm and you got an artist who hates drawing horses <laughs> uh you might want to change that up uh, for safety's sake um and in my mind's eye 
I probably was hoping we'd get Garney, you know, if yeah. we were going to get anybody, we'd get Garney for the total bookend. Um, but I, in my mind's eye, I was probably seeing that, even thinking that it was going to be Scott, that it would have that more, um, I guess, realistic you know, street feel uh, to, to it, to sort of mirror it and to kind of feel like it was really part of that world, as opposed to hyper, uh, uh, you know, hyped up. Not that this feels hyped up. I think this this actually worked out pretty well. Storytelling was was really good and felt very nice and natural for the for the most part. Yeah, I would have loved to see Ron again, but it, you know, Ron Garney. I think what the nineties, you probably had to get on the waiting list to get Ron Garney for your book. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? What um, you know, Garney didn't didn't really break big for a, a while. He should have broke big earlier, but he was he was always. I mean, Ron was like this fully formed thing, right? <laughs> you know, in my mind, like, like Lee, Lee, Lee Weeks, yeah. uh, where, where not that they have not advanced as artists, they, they have, but look at Ron's stuff from that day and age. He's an incredibly mature artist right out of the gate, right? He's got a total command of, and he gets better right over time, but he's got such a command of figure and character and storytelling, um, which is still reflected, even more so reflected today. But he should have broke huge. He should have yeah. been top of the top. And, and not that he wasn't in demand, but he was also not image, right? So yeah. he had he had the the disadvantage of being a fabulously talented artist who should have really been here. And I'm putting my hand way up for folks who are just listening. Um, way, way earlier. And now he's mm-hmm. getting uh, the overnight success of Berserker and, and well, <laughs> overnight well deserved. Overnight success means 30 years in the making. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly right. No, so it's, it's everybody. There's a huge debate going among you know some uh, comic profession. Not a debate, but it's this weird side discussion. It's not hidden. You can find it like on Twitter, you know, among people and some some people who've been around for many years are just like rolling their eyes at trolls who are coming out saying, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you know, you've got all this work now and you know you're really successful and and uh, you know you're just kind of coming out of nowhere. It's like I'm coming out of nowhere after. Two- you know, for 25 years or i've been doing this 25 years and it's been a been a, a dedicated slog and i'm not you know i pay my bills one at a time like everybody else so it's this weird balance of, of things but um but yeah i think it's a great question phil i wish i had a better answer for you um but i think i wrote it more just the intention of of it being about the city and about yeah. matt and in some ways it's it's if and someday, uh, you know, maybe that'll be my next newsletter, like premium <laughs> of the few things I have. I still have the original Daredevil proposal, right? The one that won me the, the job, um, which I don't know if I've ever put out in, in the ether, but, um, uh, but might be a fun read. But that was always about the city being a character as well, right? The, the two parts of yeah. that proposal were, you know, kick Willie in the, in the cojones in the Willie, and, yeah. and it kick, kick Willie in the Willie, right? That would have been a great title. Um, but uh, <laughs> instead of instead of last rights or fall of the kingpin, that was the uh, the working title. And uh, and the other part was making the character the city a character. And I feel like through this, the city does feel like a character. I know. I mean, I'm and I'm impressed. You, uh, yeah, you you brought the uh, fall of the kingpin within the first year. I mean, there's writers now they they'll stretch they'd stretch it out two three years. Uh. Yeah, well, that was hubris, and uh, and knowing we were getting toward three hundred, and and had to do something big for three hundred, and just kind of coming out of the gate with all all guns blazing, and uh, and not knowing what you're doing, and <laughs> well, no, I mean, like and I not, said, and I, not overthinking it. I, I'm glad. Sometimes I'm glad when someone doesn't drag it out. It, and it's two, kind of a yeah. to, you know, Jerry, Jerry Conway just going ahead and killing <laughs> Gwen Stacy. He's like, who's gonna stop me? <laughs> <laughs> and it changes things. It changes the status quo, and you know, right? Sometimes right. it needs to be done. It, yeah, it needs to happen because uh, you know, otherwise it was like, oh, no one could stop the kingpin, Spider Man, exactly. Daredevil, Punisher. No one's stopping the kingpin ever. Well, that was my, but that was my proposal. Yeah. That was my frustration as a reader was it was going through the the story after story after story of. Of you cross this line one more time, fat man, and, and you know, and you're you're no, I mean this line here. If you cross this line, uh-huh. you know, it's almost like you know, it's it's a it's a Saturday Night Live routine, you know, where it's uh, uh, it, it just 
keeps going. So there's no there's no teeth to it anymore. So there is no line, there is no repercussions, and you just keep playing out the same scene because it's it's convenient, right? And it feels like it's got a little bit of dramatic tension. But ultimately, you had to deliver, you have to deliver on that. And that was the easy conceit I had was let's actually deliver on it. Um, it's like the programmer who goes to get a job at like his favorite video game place. He fixes the bug and then quits. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Or adds, you know, I want, I want one more inventory slot. I put that in there, and now it's my my work is done. <laughs> hey, I told you, you showed great restraint in issue three hundred. I mean, you had that Peter Parker cameo. He easily could have suited up. You could add Spider Man on the cover. No, Peter Parker just answer goes, "Yeah, punch him in the face for me. <laughs> <laughs> Give him one for me." You know, it's like. <laughs> But yeah, great restraint. Yeah, no, yeah, that Punisher could have showed up, but now no, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, talk about your hubris. No, you you downplayed it. Was there pressure? It. I, I would assume there was pressure to do that, though, right? For three hundred? Yeah. For, for, no, there was no pressure on that. I mean, there was there was <laughs> no, there wasn't. The, all the pressure was me and Lee, you know, just wanting to to knock it out of the park and uh, kind of have an event and, for three hundred around three hundred. Have, yeah. have an event for three hundred, and we. We knew what it meant to us and presumably to editorial and and readers and and you know we were following Miller and Nascenti, right? I mean, you know, writing wise and and you know art wise, Jr. and and uh, and Masichelli and and all that stuff in our minds, and we were nobodies. So um, and and that was a big pressure to sort of you have got to do something here. That the, that was the pressure, but there was no. There was no, uh, you know, sense of, um, of uh, you know, you got to include this, you got to do this, you got to do that. Because also M Marvel had, as we've talked about before, had a sort of a weird, uh, whatever, uh, unfocus on Daredevil uh, when it wasn't the superstars doing it. So, you know, we were now the ordinary team and it wasn't going to get some real prominence again until Frank Miller came back again. So, uh, so we could have done anything. And and we did. We just ran ran with what we wanted. I mean, do you think there's more pressure on everyone now for writing Daredevil just because it's like, oh yeah, he was on Netflix. He showed up on She Hulk. He's getting his own series again. You know, once he they showed get... up in Home, uh, no, no Way Home. Oh No Way Home. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. like, is there yeah. way more pressure when it's like, oh yeah, he's a, you know this character's in the public eye. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know what the internal you know mechanics are or how much the movie world influences what they do in the comics uh i'm sure it does to some extent but they don't really do that many call outs to the comics in the movies so mm -hmm. it doesn't really does it really matter if they quote unquote kill thor in the comic and and i think it's more uh probably um uh integrating with timing in terms of sales that if daredevil is a big deal uh when born again comes out there's going to be a lot of attention and interviews and you know, specials and whatever that uh, that they have a lot of product available that can uh, and probably not even playing to the, the the person who becomes a fan of Daredevil from watching Disney Plus and and doesn't know about the comic. It's probably more for the current devotees of, of Daredevil who are just charged up. Our guy's getting his moment. You know, let's go out and and buy whatever's coming out, whatever special limited series you know, is happening. And, oh, that collection of New York stories that I heard about first on Chichester Chats <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and whatever else that uh, they're going to, you know, stack up for, you know. You know, you should just tweet that out, Phil, you know. Exactly. <laughs> no, sometimes you just got to manifest it, honestly. You do. It's, it's actually a pretty good idea. I mean, it, it's a very good idea. And on, on there's got to be a good collection, of, like we said, of New York stories. So why not do a whole little... Fli and I mean, well, every story that is in New York with Daredevil is a New York story. No, right? We're talking uh, no. about we're talking about, <laughs> talking about New York story. But one, I yeah, once, like, once again, really good yeah, those four I mentioned. I mean, he's not, and I don't think there's not one occasion in either any of those four issues where he's punching like a super villain in the face. You know, right, right. Yeah. But there's got there's there's other ones like yeah. that. There's 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 plenty of plenty of great stories like that or moments that people have brought together. So you could easily bring it, uh, you know, bring it into a, that type of collection. Yeah. 
But no, I mean, the comics kind of seem to do, like, subtle nods to, like, shows and stuff, because, like, I, like me and Lothar are always saying, yeah, like, when the Punisher sh- uh, show was out, Punisher looked very Frank, uh, or uh, John barenthal And, like, right now, like, uh, Sam Wilson's book, Sam Wilson is looking very Anthony Mackie in his own series, so. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, that kind of thing. I, I'm sure the artist. If that, are- if that ketchup and mustard costume shows up, we'll know why. <laughs> I'm sure the artists are getting their marching orders. It's just like, yeah, make them look like the actors if you know if they're in a series or. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I. I. It's that's a. I mean, I don't think the current Daredevil looks like. No, I, oh. some of them it doesn't. Oh. Like Spider Man, Daredevil, they seem to get away with it. But yeah, once you start getting down to like the Punisher, Sam Wilson, they're all they, they right. can't change Peter Parker. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> well again, in the movies, they, you know, he's a he's a kid in high school. He's a grown adult yeah. in the comics. So yeah, that'd be kind of right, 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 right. Yeah, and you know, it depends on the artist and what their influence is and what their talent level is and how charged up they are about maybe they love john berthold you know they think and he is I a mean, great phenomenal you know, like, actor oh, I, I want to make right and i want to you know, that that guy you you can certainly look at 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 comics over time i mean look at the comics from the 80s and 90s you can you can you can see um the influence of certain actors on characters because an artist was inspired by Yeah, Bronson. we can't let that Samuel L. Jackson thing ever happen again. <laughs> well, so. no, even not that specific. I mean, even not that specific. I mean, you know, just in the sense of, of uh, you know, again, somebody might have thought that Bronson would have been the perfect Punisher. I'm not saying they did, but you can probably look at some, like of some of Zek's work or, um, you know, Mark Texier or whatever. Uh, I'm just pulling those guys out of the blue i'm not i'm not saying but they would have been influenced by by an actor and sort of said oh that feels like uh a way to kind of create something an attitude body language right i want this guy to have feel like he's christopher lee or something like that you can see little hints of it you know maybe in the in the way that it comes out in the page all right so lilith do you have any other questions for this man no, I think it's time to let him enjoy his Saturday, although it is always fabulous picking his brain. It's always a fabulous way to start my Saturdays with you guys. So Ooh, thank you nice. again. All right. And for the homework, kids. Oh, uh, all right. We've been doing Daredevil for the last couple months, so I figure I'll mix it up. And I I believe Lilith will give her seal of approval for this pick. We'll do some Milestone and uh, do some Blood Syndicate 31 and 32 from 1995. Oh, so Awesome. 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 Yeah, I'm looking that, forward to revisiting pick. that. I am looking forward. Those are incredible things to work on, um, and uh, and that'll be a great, great revisit. And those so, are newer for me. So yeah, so this yes, this will be an interesting take. I wish I had the uh, the Dakota Bible still. That would have been uh, that would <gasps> oh. be an amazing piece. Of stuff. I'm sure they don't want to. Re- I'm sure Dennis has it, but uh, I'm sure they doesn't want to release it to the wild. Um, but that was that was a. We can talk about that there. That was, from what I remember, that was an incredible piece of work. Talk about something in Lilith with what scanned in and sent to her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, I'd she's... buy it. I'd buy the hardcover instantly. I don't care how much it costs. I, I'm yep. a huge, huge, like that whole universe means so much to me. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a phenomenal, phenomenal, like dedicated piece of writing and world building. You know, but be before the comics themselves. You know, just yeah, just like what they is had Dakota? It, they had it ready to go. <laughs> they had it ready to go. They knew what they were doing. Well, I mean, it was like a lifelong dream. So, I would hope so. So yeah, we'll be able to do a deep dive on Milestone too. Then next time, so super, super. All right, uh, all right. I know you plugged the newsletter. Do you want to plug that again or anything else? You want oh to plug? yes, thank you for the reminder. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, check out storymaze.substack.com. Depending on when this uh, airs or runs, uh, we are in the Halloween time as we're speaking. We're a couple of three days before um, the Hellfire erupts on Halloween, and um, uh, on my, if you sign up for my newsletter, you can read it for free. But if you subscribe, you get the series Bible. To Clive Barker's Hellraiser, which was the horror anthology I created and uh, or co-created and uh, and ran, you know, for a little bit of time. So uh, that's the new premium. We used to give away the plot to Daredevil 380, uh, but this is the new uh, subscribers uh, bonus. See, kids, he's not leaving you hanging. Nope, nope, nope. And Except Marvel reprint, Hellraiser. Marvel reprint more of his Daredevil. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Mix it up. Different collections. Yeah. All right. So, uh, All right, guys. Once again, the great Mr. T.G. Chichester, kids. Follow him on social All media. Right. 
All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Take Thank care. Thank you, sir.